Sinestra. All right, welcome back to Sinestra Plays uh, Chrono Trigger. Another hour of this. You re you're really interested in watching this, really? Okay. Well, I'm really sick with a sinus infection and a fever. Uh, I haven't slept in a couple days. I feel like absolute shit. Well, let's see what's Kino. Let's see what Kino is doing. It's gonna be a lot of bad mistakes and mispronunciations. So strap yourself in. Yeah, take the drunk stuff. God, what a little bitch. Ulysses' dog is joining me. He's to my right. So if somebody comes to the door or if the mailman shows up, it's you hear him shouting in protest. That is why. Yeah, give me my stuff. <laughs> you dipshit. All right, so now we have Chrono, Marl, and Isla in this long maze. And we are supposed to follow the footprints. In fact, that is the name of this particular segment. When you save, go to the save screen. Now here is where the game gets kind of annoying. You're supposed to notice that this is a beanstalk and you climb down there. That's, I wish there was a better way to notice that. Gold eaglets physical attacks against these motherfuckers. The volume in my headset is way too loud. Whoops, I just muted it. That's very smart. Patience, gentle viewers. There we go. You know, I'm getting my ass kicked by a fucking gold eaglet. Oh, and a regular eaglet, whatever that is. A red eaglet, is it even labeled as such? Oh no, they just lose their gold essence. Okay. Okay, based on the pose from the bird there, it looks like it was a, a flaming power shit just took on Isla. Maybe it's just my imagination. Come on, dude. How many freaking hit points do these things have? Like 700? Might, now might be a decent time to um, put on a berserker for drunk. Do we know any dual techs yet for Isla? In fact, let's, uh, no, we don't know shit with Isla. It'd be really nice to earn charm with her because it's super easy to uh, grind for the trade items you need in this area because you charm two at a time from particular enemies. Okay, is there even any place else to go over here? No. Let's go back up here, down here. I'm probably missing something. Up, down. Oh, there's another beanstalk down here. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, here is where they continue. Over here. Great entrance, guys. Would you spend all day practicing that? Got another one. Damn it. All right, let's use magic on these guys. Just getting burnt out. Oh, that's right. She doesn't know any magic. Let's do the badass ice sword. Yeah, buddy. I was going to say, if that doesn't kill that guy, I'm going to just quit right now. Yeah, I'm one of those people, if I don't sleep, I'm pretty useless. I can't be around people. I can't, like, I just can't function. I can't do anything other than just, like, spew my brain in all sorts of directions and just intensely tired. I can't listen. My cognitive control is just terrible. Uh, I'd imagine most people are like that. It's not exclusive to me, obviously, but is there anything back here? And we cross this bridge. Let's go up here. Get this. So yeah, since I'm in this brainless state, I thought it would be a naturally uh, a good idea to binge Beavis and Butthead. 
like all the way from the beginning of the show um starting with the frog baseball pilot episode which is only about two and a half minutes long um really fascinating to rewatch because that show got so popular so quickly and it was so shitty like the the animation and the artwork the animation everything was so immensely shitty looking see i know you, you can you should be able to um charm something from this winged ape it's like two fangs or two horns or something like that or maybe i'm getting confused with another another uh enemy that should take care of him i think those had those really do have like 450 uh hit points but yeah the first season and the second season didn't i just come from this way are so bad they're so freaking just bad looking shows like like it's like the animators can't the animators and the artists can't make up their minds of what butthead is supposed to look like so he looks different in every scene it's really kind of funny but despite that like it didn't matter because there was nothing else like that show on tv at the time in the early 90s so uh And it's funny to see the show get progressively uh, funnier and more clever. Because it's not just... Beavis and Butthead wasn't just, you know, oh, it's two idiots. It's like, it was really cleverly written. It's like, how dumb can these guys be while, you know, not relying on cheap humor? There's actually... A lot of it is really cleverly done. But my favorite part of the show growing up was... There we go. That's cool was Beavis and Butthead uh, watching music videos and making fun of the bands. Um, not just for the jokes about the bands, but, um, okay, I'm missing uh, something. Okay, the tracks go this way. It's not just making fun of the bands, it's... Uh, am I supposed to, did I not come from this way? Yeah, this is going to be really fun. I'm going to be sitting here lost the whole time. <laughs> no, it wasn't just the bands they were making fun of. It was the fact that Beavis and Butthead showcased uh, videos from bands that never got any airplay on MTV. Like, nobody knew who White Zombie was before Beavis and Butthead. Or at least I should say very few people knew who Be Be White Zombie was. There should be, like, a... Oh, you're supposed to go up here. Okay, never mind. It's the lighting that throws you off. Um, there should be another battle up here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Um, white Zombie is the best example. They saw like three White Zombie videos in the first season or in the second season alone. Like Black Sunshine and all that stuff. Um, they saw like two Guar videos. They saw two Butthole Surfer videos where... Butthole Surfers, rather, where... In one video, they didn't even say anything the entire time. They just let the video play. They weren't even laughing or saying anything. It's just butted saying, the butthole surfers. And it's, it's almost like the writers like the band so much. It's just like, let's just show the video. And it is a really cool video. There's a lot of really cool animation and stuff in it. Um, I forget what song it's for. It's on their, uh, not, the, not the album with Pepper on it, the one before it. I can't remember the name of it. It's my memory goes to shit when I don't sleep. Um, there should be a treasure down here somewhere. There it is. Treasure. All right, now we got all sorts of paths and stuff going on here. And this is going to loop around here. Nope. It's not actually. Let's go this way first. Butthole servers were another big example of that. And, um... Um, you know, uh, there's a band called Quicksand. There's another band called, uh, T you know, obviously Tool was a big one. I should probably, like, heal up here. Let's see what this spell does. There we go. Still didn't one-shot him, though. Let's see if Marl can finish him off with a wimpy 50. <laughs> That's pretty good.
good. There we go. Yeah, I think the consensus is that um, the best, quote unquote, best party to have in this game is Isla, Robo, and somebody. Some people use Luca, some pe people stick with Chrono. Some will even do Magus. Is that the exit? I don't want to exit yet, though. Yeah, I want to get over here. Get this. God, that's nothing, though. What the hell? Yeah, let's get... Probably good for my experience points here to keep fighting. I'm trying to think. I, I watched a... Uh, even like the weird one-off like pop music they see is like Kylie Minogue doing locomotion and stuff like that. It's like really stuff I didn't see before, you know, I can't remember seeing back then, let alone now. I should probably heal up. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about my voice. Sorry about my lack of enthusiasm. I'm mentally completely fried. But yeah, it's funny to see the leap in uh, production value from what Season 2 looked like of Beavis and Butthead, where there were, um, the backgrounds were scribbled with, <laughs> like, Crayola colored pencil <laughs> on, like, printer paper. They're so primitive looking, and I guess that's kind of the point, but at the same time, is there more treasures over here? Or is this just a loop? Yeah, this is just a loop. I think I already came this way. I think I got everything in here. Cue the person watching this, sh screaming their their lungs out. You forgot this. I don't care. All right, now we are at the reptile lair with some groovy new music. Oh God, this fucking thing. We gotta fight these guys, and we gotta like work our way down to the correct area, and I sure as hell am not gonna... Is there something I can... Cyclone would be your best bet here. There we go. None of them die. And let's start using Isla's magic for once instead of just using her weak ass attack. Yeah, what I like to do is I, or did I say Isla? I meant Marl. Um, maybe I said Marl. I don't know. Um, I like to get the, is it the golden stud that saves MP? That's a really, I like to put that on Marl so her healing doesn't cost anything. Or you can put it on Chrono Trigger once he learns Luminaire, and then Luminaire only costs like 10, I think. Yep, you go down this way. There are other ways you can go. Like, this is just a maze, basically. Let's just fucking spam our way through this. So how long I've been playing for? A half hour? <laughs> but yeah, Beavis and Butthead is one of my favorite shows. The first episode I remember seeing was the foreign exchange student one, where a dude from Japan comes over and gets saddled with Beavis and Butthead. And one thing I really like about that show is, um, I like how they have the teacher that can totally see you know, that always wants to see the best in them. And it's, of course, it's like this 60s, 70s hippie. Um, <laughs> he suck. Like, and he, he never gives up on them, which enables a lot of the episode's premises to play out. It starts with Mr. Van Driesen. And uh, him, like, oh, this would be a wonderful opportunity for you guys. By the way, if you've ever heard, or if you've ever heard Chuck Klosterman talk, he, that's exactly how Mr. <laughs> he has Mr. Van Driesen's voice in real life. It's really funny. But, um, like, he has Beavis and Butted, like, over to his house to clean their house just to teach them about the, about money. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. 
Yep, I knew it. And of course he trusts them alone in his house to not wreck the, his, his prized 8-track collection. It's funny. And of course they ruin it. They pile up all the... I like the sound of that kick. That's pretty cool. He's shocked! Oh, I gotta use uh, ice on this dude. Let's just do a usual attack. And then later on came Mr. Buzzcut, who, you know, gets Beavis and Butthead to do other stuff because he's a hard ass and he wants to, like, he's military and he wants to mold them into men. Like, there's one episode where he brings them to the to a gym, has them try and lift weights. Of course, they can't even lift the bar. The bar is, like, choking them. <laughs> Kick me in the jimmy! <laughs> no way. I said do it! Do it hard! That was one of the first episodes I saw, too. And you've got other people that they play off of, like uh, Daria and Stuart. Stuart's just the ultimate wuss. For some reason, he wants to be friends with Beavis and Butthead. He wants Beavis and Butthead's approval. Like, why? So, yeah. It's a good show. It's it's a fun show to to binge. There's only the, most episodes are only ten minutes long, so it's really uh, I really like it. Um, and not just for like nostalgic purposes, because I even when it was on MTV back then, it was hardly ever on. Like they played the same six or seven episodes all the time. So there's a ton I missed because you know the, now there's stuff that's like. Not, you know, you can understand why they wouldn't air it. Ooh, nice. Who do I give this to? That's a three point. Oh, she already has a rock helm. Two point. Let's give it to Marl. That's yeah, pretty sweet. Okay, I'm going to end up running into these motherfuckers again. Do I, is the exit on the bottom? Or do I just have to beat these guys? Now, I know there's all sorts of different ways you can, uh, you can proceed throughout this particular dungeon, and I'm not going to utilize any of them, because I just want to keep going. I know there's, like, stuff and items that you can get. Uh, I don't know what exactly for sure, but, um, anyway. What I'd like to be able to do, probably off-camera, is once I learn Charm for, uh, oh, no. Wait, do I already know Charm for Marl? Or for either of these people? No, I don't. Oh, Provoke! Maybe that... No, Provoke doesn't really work. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to go back into the forest maze and get some fangs and stuff. That's where you get, like, the ruby vests and uh, a really awesome weapon. The gr I think that's when you get the green dream? Or am I thinking way later? I don't know. Probably totally wrong on that. But you at least collect uh, stuff like petals one thing at a time. Okay, now we're getting toward... Oh, yeah. Let's do Ice Sword on this motherfucker. Yeah, come on. Um, let's see, what else is going on? <laughs> Meanwhile, my girlfriend is watching Seinfeld, you know, every so often. <laughs> I love he picks up the enemy and throws it at you. That's great. So it's nothing but 90s in this household. You got Beavis and Butthead. You got Seinfeld. You got Chrono Trigger. It's pretty funny. Like, we don't do this stuff on purpose. It's just like, I'm sick of everything else. I've seen all of BoJack Horseman. I've seen all of, you know, Better Call Saul and... Stranger Things and all these other shows, and it's like Black Mirror is, you know, it's good, it's fine, it's every episode's hit or miss. And I'm, you know, I'm burnt out on doing videos, and um, it's work, working some variety in our attacks here just for fun. Wow, lightning does not affect that guy. That certainly did, though, thankfully. Let's do ice. So it's like, you know what, let's just do what we feel like. Doing and watching, and Seinfeld's really comfortable to have on because 
these are episodes I haven't seen in, in so long, but, um, you can just, it's like having music on. It's just like a soundtrack. So it's not so much we're sitting down and watching them, they're just on, and it's just funny to hear, you know, George flipping out about something, or Kramer doing something goofy. Like, what is it? called he's got like the Kavorkov or something like that where he has this I have this power and it's like makes him irresistible to women so he bathes in garlic or something like that. <laughs> it's really funny. Okay let's also get uh use up some of these ethers. We've only got 13 of them so do we have a boss fight coming out? Yes we do. Wait this isn't a boss fight Nah, let's just do a regular. Her regular attack is strong enough. Um, ice. Thing is, is if you don't kill that dinosaur thing, Megasaur rather, it says its name right on the screen, Megasaur, <laughs> right away, uh, it'll release that electric en energy as a full screen attack, and it does serious damage. So you want to get that thing immediately, because otherwise you are in a world of pain. Finish these guys off. Um, I think this just leads to the Reptite Castle, which is yet another dungeon. So we go from Forest Maze to Reptite Lair Underground, I guess. And now we're going to be going to the castle. Come on, learn some things. Oh, here we go. Oh, do I fight uh, Black Tyranno here? Do I really need to use a... I don't think so. Whoa. Hey, that guy's got some cool clothes. Never trust a man wearing a cape. Why was your father talking to a man with a cape? It's funny because the guy in that Seinfeld episode, no, tell him this guy. Oh, that's right, Nisbel. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. And then later you fight Nisbel 2. Of course, reminds me of one of my favorite jokes from Garfield and Friends. You're not Sylvia. You're one of the kung fu creatures of a rampage. Two. Is drill kick? Come on. Oh, do I have to wait for Chrono? Okay, never mind. That's, uh, yeah, that's ice sword. Fuck yeah, motherfucker. See, this is what this guy does. He. Uh, you shock him with lightning, and then he's kind of helpless, and then he releases all his energy, and it looks like he's taking a shit. Yeah, buddy. Making quick work of him, though. I never get sick of that. That's such the sound. Uh-oh, yeah, here we go. Let's see how we do. We're going to have to do at least a... Ooh, that's, that hurts. Oh, especially Marl. So let's do Aura Whirl. And in fact, let's uh, give uh, Marl a mid-tonic just to be safe. Oh, you know what? She's not even... Isn't that her max? No, her max is 284. Good thing I did that. Okay, so let's do a roller... Oh, wait, I have to... Shit, that's not, not even going to do anything. That was stupid. Yeah, 10... You gotta shock the guy first. Eventually, Drunk is going to need... Let's just wait for Ice Sword. Eventually, Drunk will need... Uh, a Ether. It would be nice if I was able to transfer some of Isla's MP to Drunk. That would be handy. Oh, this is just attack. This is... Six fifteen. I've hit like four of those so far. And once again, we play very conservatively. And let's give him a mid ether. 
Did not think I'd be using this much magic for Chrono. I guess it's required at this part of the game. Alright, let's, uh, we need to, uh, get this bum with some lightning. And we'll wait for some ice sword action. I would look up how many hit points this guy actually has, but I don't have the guide in front of me. Even if I did, that'd be kind of weird, because my setup is very messy and unruly, and I don't really have a place to put the stuff. And there we have it. Yeah, buddy, all your popcorn muscles. You got your Mickey Mouse tattoos, and they didn't get you anywhere. Except defeat. Really? No new spells? Come on. Okay, just a reminder. Oh, I should have brought Luca with. It looks alright. I'll take your word for it. Hey, thank you for getting me out of that giant fucking maze. Yeah, I think the game counts on you to take Luca everywhere. I should have probably done that. Sure. I can't take her with me? Yeah, Kino, you're kind of a dick. I don't trust you. In one of these huts, there's like a, a tab somewhere. Yeah, whatever. Let's see if I can trade any of this shit. See, now this is the point where you would... um. Three each of any two items. Ugh, only got two feathers. You come back here later and get some of this stuff. Okay, let's do Petal and Fang. Uh, yeah? Yes. Now, let's try Petal and Horn. Yes, please. And now we try... God, this is mostly weapons. That's crazy. I could really use armor, though. Of course, we do fang and horn. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, you must use feather for... Uh, for... Uh, armor. So we increase 5 there. We increase 10 there. And we increase 10 there. That's a significant upgrade. I guess if I wanted to be a dick, I could have, before f uh, finishing the fight with Nisbel, I could have de-equipped Isla. Like, all her stuff, and then just put it on somebody else just so I could have it. But, eh, no big deal. Alright, I guess I go back to the mountains. Let's check these uh, huts real quick. Thank you. That's the idea. Okay. No. Oh. Sure. Right on. Don't admire me today. I'm a husk. I cannot think or move or do anything. You know what? Let's grind a bit. See if I can get some more feathers. In fact, let me try... Oh, it just confuses them. Okay. I, I forget about certain things about this game. What works, what doesn't work. What does what. That's really not all that interesting. Alright, now we'll just... Uh... And he'll miss. Yeah, con confusion when you are when you have it in this game, one of your party members, is so freaking frustrating. I guess you could say that about any JRPG, really. Any game with a confuse spell. So annoying. 
there's going to be another battle coming up here. Yep, there's another petal, but I don't need petals. I need feathers. Cyclone these motherfuckers. So what else have I been watching? Not much else. Just Beavis and Butthead reruns from 1993. It's pretty crazy their production schedule for that show too. They cranked out almost 200 episodes in about four years. I think the show started in 92. And according to Mike Judge, MTV was like, do as many as you can of these. I mean, they're only 10 minutes long and just any ideas you got, just throw them out there. I think the real breakthrough episode of that show was, um, well, the big one was No Laughing, where they weren't allowed to laugh in class because all the teachers in the school were so sick of the constant, <laughs> it's my crappy butthead laugh. <laughs> I used to do a really good Beavis before puberty hit back in junior high. But, um,. Now I loved that show when I was a kid. In fact, I remember coming into seventh grade, uh, seventh grade shop class. There was this dude Neil who had cable, and we just asked him like, "What videos did they see? What bands did they see?" And he's like, "Tom Jones." And I was like, "What's Tom Jones? That's stupid." And he's like, "Yeah, that's what they said." <laughs> it's good times. But um, yeah, I don't. Uh, there's not a lot of people who I would want to meet, like in terms of, oh, if you could meet any famous person, blah, 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 what would you say? Would you talk to him and ask him? I'm not really wired like, like I don't talk to people. I don't really like talking to people. I'm not a social person. So it's like, I don't usually have a very long list of people I'd want to do that to. But Mike Judge, I would absolutely love talking to him about Beavis and Butthead, like, how did the videos get chosen? Um, st stuff like that. Um, and did he ever get any flack from certain people? I know he did from Kip Winger. And I, I know the guys from Grim Reaper actually said, uh, you know, it's like, oh, those videos were terrible. The, you, you're more than welcome to just, like, slag the hell out of them because they're really stupid. I got a big kick out of hearing that, but, uh... No, I would love to just bullshit with Mike Judge about Peeves and Butter and just pick his brain and ask him all sorts of questions. And Mar learned haste, I think. Is that what that said? That is an awesome, awesome boss fight tech. That is another reason why I love having Marl in my party at all times, because haste is so... so I mean, you speed up your time so you can use your more powerful characters yeah now you have the ability to jump before you just came to the cliff and it just you just sat there an invisible wall stopped you okay so now we presumably have our dream stone to fix the moss immune yep I know who that is. What's up, Robo? No. Oh, he's so sad. I'm sorry, Robo. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, so once we get this sword fixed, it obviously belongs to one person in particular, right? The guy who had the hilt, otherwise known as Fish. Or frog, whatever your preference. What's up, bro? <laughs> I'm not gonna ask how you get. Oh, okay. He does say that. No, don't tell me. I don't think my heart. <laughs> nice little bit of dialogue there that uh, helps add to the weight of the situation, uh, the gravity of what you're doing. Ooh, and we get the 12,000 BC music again. We just have to kind of hang out and. Da, 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 mosh! No. Yep, 
Yeah, I'll just kind of gesture at it until it does something. And I'll use my telekinesis to absorb the sword into my coat. I'm gonna admire your katana collection here. Got some daggers up there. Some more swords. I'll take swords for 400. I'm done here too. What the hell did you do? <laughs> Would you just Hadouk into the thing onto the table? <laughs> okay. Where's the hilt? Ow, my ears. Guy's got a nice kitchen. Looks like a nice gas stove. Oh, and the sword's nice too. That fridge is probably, you know, probably a $1,200 fridge right there. A good uh, sink. You got some nice, uh, got, got your flour and sugar and your potions and shit up here. Yeah, let's cook up some lunch here. I wonder what that is. A nice bowl of red chili. Uh, let's see what you got. Actually, you could probably sell all your shit to him. Yeah, well, there's nothing here we can... Is there any items? No. So let's sell... The Iron Helm. Oh, Power Meal. Huh, I forgot I got that. That's cool. Yep, Plasma Gun, goodbye. Robin Boat, goodbye. Now we got 23,000 gold. So now we warp back to... 600 BC, or AD rather. After the death of Christ, that's not where I want to go. <laughs> I still think that's funny. Come on. Okay. Let's uh, talk to this guy. Every time you come back here, you want to do that. Again, that's JRPG intuition. I'm not bragging, by the way, when I say that. Like, oh, I know how to do this. Oh, I know how to talk to... I'm, I'm just saying, like, when you play these games, like, th you, you just kind of have to know. Like, just... And that comes from experience of... From playing these games. You check everything. You talk to everybody. That's just kind of how it is. All right, let's go see Frog. We gotta go all the way down here, though. Gotta fight these idiots again. In fact, there's probably another, excuse me, another faster way to get there. Oh, come on. But I don't care. Yeah, a couple of years ago, um. Just for the hell of it, I binged The Simpsons, but I only made it to, I, I made it from season one, which holy cow, you want to talk about rough around the edges, season one of The Simpsons. Good God, man. Um, and season two, season two is actually very good, and season three is when it goes into like hyperdrive, and it's, it becomes one of the best shows ever, um, to this day, because it's very, um, it, it, the humor hasn't gotten... It's not dated humor at all. Some of the jokes are, like... Oh, no, not Suter. Like, the, <laughs> when they're making references to, like, old... Uh, Supreme Court justices. I don't want to fight any of you people. Get out of my way. I suppose I could have fought the new, but... Alright, real quick, I want to make sure that it's been pointed out. The Masamune does not even show up for drunk. It doesn't show up for anybody. So nobody else can equip it except the hero. And who might that be? What's oh, Mr. Frog? I'm sorry, Mr. Fish. Hey, here's this sword that's like probably a foot taller than you are somehow. Can you wield it? Here we go. One of the best parts of the game right here. I'm probably just going to be quiet this whole time.
This is a flashback, by the way, in case the game didn't make that obvious enough. Sir Cyrus! Cyrus the Virus! What, are you ditching us? What the hell's going on? Now I gotta run off with this scrawny, green-haired guy. Alright. The flashback continues with the montage! Show progress in a montage! Huh. What's the backstory with this guy? Like, how did this frog dude come up with this thing? It'd be nice to get some backstory on that. And who's the woman with Glenn there? This is awesome. Our first sight of Magus in person. Not the best strategy to fight Magus. Whoa. I guess he's got one of those inflammable capes. Oh, look at the pretty rainbow. <laughs> yeah. And as such, it's time for some sad music. Chrono, Luca, and Marl were so bored with that flashback they fell asleep. <laughs> oh, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Sheesh. Let us go. <laughs> okay. Um, this time I'm gonna take Luca. I know the sensible thing would probably be to take Robo, but I don't care. Uh, it's, this isn't a sensible playthrough. Let's uh, fight some people. Get some uh, levels here. Oh, do I even... Oh, yeah, that looks like it's equipped, right? Does it automatically equip the mouse immune, or...? I'm thinking no. Oh, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to attack those dudes first. All right, I gotta double check and make sure that that's equipped. Come on, no text. Ugh. Yeah, he's just got the iron sword. Why don't you have it equipped yet, you dipshit? Do you need the hero metal first? No. What does the hero metal even do if you don't have the mass immune? Anything? Yeah, up to critical hit rate. What, did I forget it down there? Why don't you have it equipped? Oh, I made a mistake. Shouldn't it attack these guys first? Alright, let's attack 
Beat this dude. Actually, that's gonna finish him off. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was really goofy looking. <laughs> Frog spray. Oh, uh, you are comic relief at times, Frog. I mean, how can you not be if you're, you know, a frog? There we go. Die already! Jesus. Puka level up. Damn it! No spells. Okay. Ah, alright. I'm done fighting these assholes. There we go. So now, let's go talk to some people. Well, nobody here. Let's see if there's anything I can buy for, I guess. Let's equip Frog with the gold suit. I guess I regret, uh, Selling all that stuff when I did, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Is this the kid that falls over? Yep. <laughs> okay. Do I run into Toma here? Nope. This is the guy that, uh, yeah, we're still talking about Tata being a fake. This guy's urinating in the corner. Oh, okay, yeah, th these dudes tell you where to go. Uh, east of the mountains. East of the Diodario Guitar Mountains. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Is this the magic cave? It is. This just wasn't available back then. Oh, we're going to continue our... Uh, our cutscenes here. I guess he can't equip the Moss Immune yet because it he needs to build up to equipping it for this moment right here. God, who are those assholes? Jeez. <laughs> He's still spinning. One of my favorite lines in the game. You're a marshmallow, Glenn. Wish I knew somebody named Glenn so I could call him a marshmallow. Glenn was 50 feet tall. You just don't have an incentive to hurt anybody yet. That'll change. Like, right now. <laughs> Anytime I see the word Og spelled out like that, it makes me think of Charlie Brown. That's kind of his... Aw, there he is. Hero metal very slowly goes down the drain. No, it floats up shore to frog, of course. It's one of the fun things about this game. There's more than one quote unquote hero. Alright, here we go. Turn up your speakers. Let's do this shit.
That is badass. That is the most badass thing ever. Yeah. Look at that pose. Oh, we don't have an entrance? Let's make one with this fucking badass sword. Oh, that is the best. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. And we'll do Magus's castle in this cave and all that stuff next time. So I want to thank you for watching. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Cheers.